Okay, quick video on the greatest integer function, an emergency video on the greatest integer function. Um, sometimes this is called the floor, and the definition is the largest integer less than or equal to x. It's probably easiest to just do some examples. The floor of 4.9 is 4. The floor of 4.1 4. is 4. The floor of 4 is 4. The floor of 3.99728 is 3. Is 3. And so on. So the floor of 0 0.001 is 0. When we get into negatives, it gets uh, a little counterintuitive until you think about it for a second. Um, the largest integer less than negative 0.5 would be negative 1. Because if we were to go to 0, that would be bigger than negative 0.5. Okay, um, so there are some examples. Let's think about graphing this. Yes. And for that, we can make like a table of values. So when x is, for example, negative 1, the greatest integer function of x will be negative 1. And then negative 0.9 will still be negative 1. Negative 0.5, ditto. Mm -hmm. In fact, it will stay negative 1 all the way until we hit yep. zero, at which point it becomes zero. And then one is one. Right? One is one, but right before one, 0 0.98 zero. will give us zero. Okay? And then 1.1 gives us one, 1 1.9 gives us one, and then when we hit two, we've got two. And so on and so forth. Right. So how are we going to reflect this in a graph. Um, one thing I can do on the graph is mark the integers. Mm -hmm. So the dots that I'm drawing right now are the integers. So when x is 1, y will be 1. And when x is 2, y will be 2. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is negative 1, y will be negative 1. Okay, so let's actually zoom in on this to get the details nice and clean. If I were to plug in 1.9, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1. Yeah. Not 2. If I plug in 1.99, I'm going to get 1. In fact, anything along this region is going to give me 1 until I hit exactly 2. Yes. And then when I plug in 2 is when I get 2. Um, so I could, so this, this spot right here actually needs to be an open circle. Um, so you know what, I'll draw the graph in red to indicate what's actually going on. So the red part is the graph of the greatest integer function. Maybe that. I wonder if the police siren is going to show up on the video. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so again, what's happening is I'm plugging in two and I'm zapping all the way up to two. But as soon as I move to the left of two, I'm back down to constantly one, 
until I get to one. I cross slightly to the left of one, and I'm back down to zero. Yeah, I got the sniffles. And, and so on. Um, so there you go. There is uh, a brief tutorial on the greatest integer function. Let's do one shift, or let's do a couple of shifts of the greatest integer function. So how about something like y equals 3 times the greatest integer function x. I think maybe the best way to go about these is to start on the integers. Whoops. Um, start on the integers. And by that I mean I'm going to graph. So x would be like negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Y is going to be negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. Because on the integers, the greatest integer function doesn't do anything tricky. Um, so I'll do it in red again, I guess. At 0, we're going to get 0. At 1, we're going to get 3. At 2, we'll get 6. And negative 1 will get negative 3. Now, what's going to happen is the same pattern. We'll zoom in. The same pattern being it's going to stay at 0 until x hits 1. And it's going to, then it'll jump up to 3. And it's going to stay at 3 until x hits 2. And then it'll stay at 6 until x would hit uh, 3 at which point it'll jump up here, and so on. Okay, uh, we'll do one more. <laughs> Something like... Uh, y equals greatest integer function of x minus 3. This is going to be a straightforward shift to the right by 3. But even so, we can do the same deal. So when x is negative 1, y is going to be negative 4. <laughs> Whoops. I'm always starting on the integers because those are always easy. There's nothing tricky happening on the integers. So if we graph this, we've got, wait, sloppy. All I'm doing is I'm coloring in the dots on the integers. Um, if you like, you can envision the line y equals x minus 3. Of course, that's not going to be the graph uh, because the actual graph is going to extend from each of these. We're going to have the same deal going on. And if you like, you can go back to the very first one, and you'll notice that all we've really done is take... Oh, it looks like I undid some of the red stuff. Um, I hit undo, and I think it messed up the graph or something. All we've really done is taken this graph and then we shifted it to the right by three. 
Okay. That's it. Last thing I'll point out for drawing this, the solid dots are directly above the uh, the open dots. Yes. Okay. That's important. Um, there you go. There's the greatest energy function. Great stuff.